In past videos we've mentioned how container ships can lose containers in heavy weather, but we never stop to consider what actually happens to them. Do they sink, or do they float and plague the oceans forever as growlers, looking just below the surface for unsuspecting yachts? According to the World Shipping Council, between 2008 and 2021, an average of over 1,500 containers were lost every year. Granted, there are some spikes corresponding to the total loss of a ship, like the Mole Comfort in 2013 and the MV Rena in 2011, where we can assume that a lot of containers went down with the ship, but there are also significant events where containers simply fell over the side. In 2020, for example, one Opus lost over 1,800 in adverse weather, and the following year, Maersk Essen had a similar experience, losing around 750. It's these containers that we're really interested in, as there is no sinking vessel to drag them down. On their own, do they float, or do they sink? The obvious starting point is to consider whether they are inherently buoyant as is. A standard 40-foot container measures around 12 meters by 2.4 by 2.4, meaning it would displace 69 cubic meters of water and have to weigh over 70 tons to sink. That's well above any weight limit imposed by any point in the transport chain, so we can immediately say that a sealed 40-foot container that goes overboard will always float. As for standard 20-foot containers, using the same logic, they need to weigh 34 tonnes to go down, so there is a possibility that some of those may sink straight away. Of course, the chance of a container going over intact and remaining undamaged is pretty low. It could hit other containers or even the ship itself resulting in a sizeable hole, or even if it made it off the ship intact, the movement of the ocean and cargo inside would start to inflict damage. On top of that, we have the specification of the containers themselves, which are designed to be weather tight, not water tight. They're fine for keeping out driving rain, spray, and the weather in general, but they're not designed to be submerged. Door seals will start to break down, and even the smallest holes will begin to let in water. So, rather than looking at the container as a sealed unit, we actually need to consider the buoyancy provided by the cargo. Think about it. A container with two cars inside will obviously sink when it floods, while the same container filled with bath toys will instead stay afloat. This is actually what happened in 1992, when the Ever Laurel lost some of her containers in a storm while on passage between Asia and the USA. One container that went over had over 28,000 bath toys inside, meaning that even when the container flooded, it would still remain afloat because the toys would display so much water, generating enough buoyancy for themselves and the steel container. Of course, we know that for whatever reason the toys got out, so that container will have sunk while the toys spent the next few decades riding the ocean currents giving scientists an unexpected insight into ocean flow patterns worldwide. Anyway, the point is, the only way for a container to remain afloat for a prolonged period is for it to contain cargo that is sufficiently buoyant, and for that cargo to remain secure enough that it doesn't get out. When that happens, what we end up with is what yacht skippers refer to as UFOs, unidentified floating objects. They're often impossible to pick up on radar because so little of the container sticks up above the surface, so there's nothing to reflect the pulse back to the transmitter. The thing is, in a face-off between a metal container and a fiberglass yacht, 99% of the time the yacht is going to come off worse. Especially on things like deep ocean races where yachts travel at high speeds, the damage can be catastrophic. So, what's the solution? We've already said that not every container lost overboard will end up being a danger to shipping. Any that are severely damaged will likely sink pretty quickly, and of those that are not, if they have cargo in, it's likely to eventually break free and damage the container anyway, especially if the weather that caused the container loss persists. This means that we're likely left with a mix of empty containers floating high in the water and containers filled with secure, buoyant cargo. Given enough time, water will penetrate, causing them to float lower and allowing cargo securing arrangements to degrade until eventually they all will sink, but there will obviously be a time when the container is floating so low that they'll be lethal to passing yachts. But what if you speed up the flooding process, maybe with door seals specifically designed to break down in the presence of seawater? It should speed up the waterlogging process and subsequent sinking, but it's going to have a negative impact on millions of containers that are not lost by providing less protection to their cargo. And it's not going to actually guarantee that the container will sink anyway. As we've already said, if the container is filled with low density cargo, or even if it has integrated insulation, like a reefer container, it's going to be buoyant even when it does flood. In that case, there could even be an argument for it being safer while floating high in the water, rather than flooding it and making it harder to see. 
There's a similar argument when it comes to other technologies as well, like devices that allow water to flood in only if they're submerged for a period of time. Again, they will speed up the sinking of empty containers, but aren't going to help containers that are inherently buoyant anyway. So, if speeding up the flooding process doesn't solve the issue, the next ideas revolve around increasing visibility so that at least passing vessels know the container is there. The simplest solution would be to paint containers bright colours, but again, it's not going to help in all situations. A neutrally buoyant container at the surface isn't going to be visible no matter how bright you paint it, and inherently buoyant refrigerated containers can't be painted other colours anyway. They're painted white to minimise the amount of heat they absorb, painting them a brighter colour will make them far less effective at their primary job. So, what about a technological solution? Surely it would be possible to fit some sort of tracker to each container, much like the AIS system used on boats. Well, the issue comes from the length of time that containers pose a hazard. You'd have to somehow provide power for potentially months, with the most dangerous phase coming right at the end when the container is least visible. You don't actually need a transmitter on a freshly discarded container floating high in the water. You need it three months down the line when it's slowly become waterlogged and is lurking just beneath the waves before it takes its inevitable final dive to the seabed. As you can see, it's hard to deal with lost containers, so instead, the industry is focusing its efforts on container stowage and weather routing of vessels to minimise the amount of them that enter the water in the first place. But what do you think? Is there a better way? Let me know in the comments down below.